Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. This is Alex. We're coming to you live from Harlem in New York City, and this is called The Ramble. May I start off this latest edition of Alex and Albert by saying, Oh, my back's killing me. Uh, oh, my arm is killing my face. Hey, I everybody. fell on my face and my nose right here. It's hurting. And what? I said, see you, everybody. <laughs> you get this. We established uh, on the last edition of this that Albert it doesn't like to talk. With. Are you going to keep it blank like that? If you keep talking about health. No, I'm just saying that why, you, why, you're, why you're so reluctant to uh, talk with me about it. Because you, we, you don't want it. But anyway, we were, last time, you know, what we were doing last time got interesting. We got into um, capitalism. And uh, I, um, I'll give you a good example of um, something that we were taught in school when I was in college. I took, I can't remember what the class was, some class I had to take. And the teacher said, okay, we, I want you to read uh, chapter 27 of the textbook, okay? And then tomorrow, come in, we'll be discussing it. All right, fine. So I go home, and chapter 27 is entitled Communism Versus Democracy. And I went, what? What is wrong with that statement, Albert? Uh The difference in economics versus politics. Absolutely. And it's, I went they're back. Not, they're, I went, they're not equatable. I went back the next day, and she said, anybody have a comment about the uh, about the chapter I had you read yesterday? And I said, yes, um, I got do. got yourself in trouble. Yeah. And I said, uh, it's totally uh, a false premise for, an art, for, for a chapter. And right. she said, why? Right. I said, because you can't equate communism with democracy. And she said, sit down. You're wrong. This is in college. No, okay. Doesn't surprise me. I'm, I, I, it's a, I, I remember it to this day, because I, th there I saw how precious we are about our economy, uh, and that the communism was the enemy of of of, uh, of uh, the uh, communism was the enemy of democracy. No, totalitarianism is. Uh, uh, dictatorships are so on and so forth, but not. Communism. Communism is simply an economic uh, philosophy. And some of the people who have uh, go by that uh, economic philosophy are totalitarian, unfortunately. But it, it's not the same. And so I always, I, I was always bothered by the fact that we are so in love with money in this country that everything is based on it. You know, and the disparity between the haves and the have-nots in this society, I'm telling everybody out there, go out, earn a trillion dollars, and you're, or a billion dollars. There are no trillionaires yet. Right, right. Go out and earn a billion dollars, and you still won't be wealthy. Not like the other billionaires, Okay. You know, I don't understand. What, well, why? I'm saying that you know, there's this myth that you can make all this money and your life is going to improve. And they always say that to the you and I. You know, work hard and save your money, and you'll be just fine. Well, I wasn't just fine. You know, and I worked my ass off for all of my life. I worked since I've, I've been working since I was 14. Where, where, where is and the if evidence it hadn't been for somebody dying fine. and leaving me a lot of money, I wouldn't be what I consider financially secure. Well, say this again. You're, you're not financially secure? No, I am now, but I, I wasn't before. 
I mean, I had money, and I probably could have lived on it for the rest of my life, but I had to watch it. I don't have to watch it anymore. I don't understand what you're trying to say. What I'm trying to say is this whole idea that if you, if, if you work hard and all of that, you, there's this reward at the end of the rainbow that probably doesn't exist. Well, who, 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 who makes that silly statement to start with? That's a ridiculous statement. And is, is that supposed to be the, 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 the fallacy of the American dream, which is nonsense also? Well, the American dream is a total myth that we're fed to keep us working hard. Yeah, it's it's complete bullshit. It's I mean, I've been on this treadmill. Bullshit. I've been on this treadmill for the last uh, how old am I now? Oh, let's say seventy years. Mm -hmm. I've been on this treadmill. Yeah, and by the way, by the way, where did it get me? But in the, in the case of radio, it's a satisfaction of ego. Yeah, well, I don't. I I wouldn't go as far as to say you were working hard. For the last 70 years, you had a very good job, which you loved, which was a which was a, not a difficult job. No, no, it was a very difficult job. It just didn't require uh, brute strength. I didn't have to lift anything. I know? don't believe it was difficult either. I don't believe you had a difficult time oh, doing it. I'm, I've always I, I, I had to learn this craft. I had to get I was I think. The first and ten that was years, difficult? the ten first ten years I was doing it, I was terrible. But that doesn't make it difficult. You were but terrible. No, but you I, enjoyed I, it. Every day when I woke up, I I lived with how can I make this better? How can I make what I do better? But that has nothing to do with work. That's what we do as people. We think about how can I make my. So, so you're saying better. I had I had it easy. I think so. Yes. I think so. Compared to a lot of people, I yeah. only had. You, 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 you never had. You never had to worry about where you're going to get your next meal. You never had to worry about where you're going to live. You never had to worry about how to take care of people you love. That's not difficult. There are people who do this, millions of people, on a regular basis and have to worry about things like that. And I'm not just talking about in this country. I'm talking about all over the world. So don't give me your, your cryberry baby stuff about well, it. Wait a minute. So every every year, uh, every year, because of, of the nature of the landlords, I have to deal with a situation in which if I don't sign a renewal of my lease, I can get thrown out of here. And I can't sign the renewal of the lease because they are not giving me the correct amount of money to pay. The lease is for another number other than what they should be able to charge me. I have to deal with this every year. I don't know that I'm going to be here tomorrow. There isn't going to be a thing on my door saying you've been thrown out of your apartment. And, and, and I'd like and, to get my lawyer on it, but he won't answer my calls, so, you know. Well, poor baby, you have to get your lawyer on something. There are people who can't do this. There are people who, who don't have the opportunity to say, well, they're going to kick me out. What happens if Alex Bennett look, gets kicked look, out? Look, look, he look, finds yeah, another place I, to live. There I, are people who cannot afford to live anywhere. But I think you're mixing something up. You're I hope you're right. You're mixing up that I had it made and I had it easy because I was doing something that I truly loved. Now, most people are not uh, given that opportunity. Okay. Had, one thing has Most nothing. Most people go two to a job arguments. they can't stand. But those are two different arguments. You didn't have it made because you had a job that you loved. You had it made because you were always employed, because you always had enough money. I wasn't to pay always employed. Me. For the most part, you were. Everybody has lulls, but for the most part, you were. And when you weren't employed, you had the ability to pay your rent. You had the ability to pay for food. There are people that don't do that. That's not, that, you have not had but it What well. I'm saying I, I, is, I is that, that. You, are, you are wrong in, it's been easy for me only in that I have done something all my life and never stopped doing it that I enjoy doing. In other words, I want to go to work and play. I want to go to work and have fun. So but, does everyone. But that doesn't mean that I don't have value to somebody else doing that. And that doesn't mean that I don't get paid for doing that. You know, but it, it, to do a job that you truly love is a blessing. And I guess I am blessed that way. Yes. Yes, you certainly are. You certainly are. How about, how about you? You had, you, had, you had to produce a show with me. 
Was that fun? Listen, I've had one of the best lives I can ever imagine. I, I, I've, I've done just about everything I wanted to do, mm -hmm. and there's no way I complain. Uh, I've not ever had to worry about where I'm going to live, how I'm going to live, how I'm going to eat. So uh, I'm, I wouldn't complain about anything. There's, there's nothing no, to complain I've, about. I, look, I, have, I, have I had a good life? I've complained every moment of it along the way, but the truth of the matter is, yes, I've had a very good life. Then stick you know, with that. I've, That's I've a been some to very do. interesting I've places. Trouble. I've hung out with some interesting people, you know, yeah. in my time as a result of my job. Uh, uh, you know, so, I mean, I, uh, uh, you know, I have to, uh, I look back at it. My life was an adventure. It was a great it adventure. It was. It, it was a good adventure. Yeah. yeah. I think. But I'm very lucky. Or did I, I don't know how luck figures into that. You did. You made choices that that were the right choices to do what you wanted to do, and you were able to do that. Many people aren't able to do that, but there are a lot of people who are able to do those things. So, I made bad choices. We all make bad choices. You know, <laughs> all of us. Uh, um, I mean, I, I remember. I remember once in San Francisco being out of work, got let go or something. I can't remember which one it was. And uh, my clock radio went off in the morning, and there was a guy on called Gene Nelson. He was a morning man over at KSFO. And as I'm lying there with my eyes half open, I hear this guy doing a morning show. And I look at my radio and I say, how come he has a job but I don't? You know? And that always bothered me. Why some people are successful in our business who are mediocre. And me, who I think tried to do something a little different all the way along the line. You know, I always went against what people expected me to do. Uh, these guys are successful. There's still many of them still working in their markets, but I'm not. What's that all about? Because you're old. That's what that's all no, about. Well, no, no, no. Uh, okay. You know, you know uh, why that point, happened. At this point, it's ageism that's making it so I can't work. Right. You know, they go, yeah, that, he's all too old for this. Um, where was it I went and I did a, did but, a show? But, but, but the technological difference has enabled you to be doing this again. Yeah, but here, here like... Nobody, remember... nobody, nobody who is anybody is doing radio now. It's not a thing anymore. No, no, no but forget about it's that. Done. Forget about that. Here's an example. Uh, when I was looking for work, and there was work to be had in this profession, okay, after we, after we left Sirius XM, uh, a, a friend of mine, uh, Walter Sabo. By the way, we didn't leave. We were asked to leave. We were asked to leave, yes. Right. We, we, didn't, we didn't exactly go. No. Hey, we're leaving now. I remember once they said to me, no, we're not firing you. We're just renewing your contract. I said, well, then do I get to come in tomorrow? And they said, no. Then I said, that feels like being fired. <laughs> you know? I mean, firing is firing. Uh, you've been, we've, we've been da you've been downsized. Yeah, really? well, they're not allowed to use words like that because then that, then it could be held against them if you take them to unemployment court. Well, they didn't fire you. They downsized you. I said, no. It downsized you. Anyway, but the point is, is that uh, I, uh, um, you know, I just never, uh, I don't think, I think my biggest problem is I've never had a security that I was going to be someplace the next day, you know. And that was only because of the choices I made and how I presented my program, you know. And who, and who has that security? Even people who are, who are uh, members of labor unions don't necessarily have that security. Is Jim you, Kerr still working? Sure he is, yeah. Why? Absolutely. 50 years in New York. Yeah, how what? old is he? He's got to be... Got to be 70 now. Oh, well, older than that. Probably older than that, yeah. You know, I was working with him at, uh, at the WPLJ. That's where he first worked. He did his first morning show there. Well, he's working because he is in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. 
That's the way it is. Some people don't have that. Some people do. I never did. Oh, yes, you did. What do you oh, mean? Sure I fought every inch to keep keep employed. But you weren't at the right place at the right time. See, you were at Sirius at the wrong time. That's the wrong place at the wrong time. And the wrong time because technology changed. That's why. Well, that's true. But uh, we weren't fired because they were adapting to new technologies. Well, but that, that's certainly one thing to do with it. Yes, they were adapting to new technologies where they didn't need people who had been experienced in, in the broadcasting business to be broadcasting anymore. They could get anybody who is an expert on whatever topic they want and throw them on and have them for virtually nothing. Because then there's then there's that ego that that pops in again. People say, "Sure, I'll do that." Well, we don't have a lot to pay. That's okay. I'll still do it. It's 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 radio or it's television or it's whatever it is now. Well, the the thing that happened at Sirius XM that I was amazed by, um, Joel Osteen started doing a show on Sirius XM. Now, of course, I Joel Osteen is a whore, and he'll go anywhere to do a show in any place he possibly can, and we understand that, okay? All right. Let's leave it there. Let's move on to the fact that we go, well, so how much is he paying them to put that show on where he hustles for his church, right? Mm -hmm. And the answer to that question was, no, ask the right question, how much are they paying him? And they're paying Joel Osteen, who knows how much money, to hawk his wares on Sirius XM. And what's wrong with that? But why are they paying him? Because he has something to offer. He what has a he huge following. Huh? That's why they're paying him, because he has a huge following. But then he gets a, those people to listen to him on Sirius XM, and he basically is doing an advertisement for his church for an hour or whatever. Have you heard a lot of the talk stations there? Many of them are are, are, are ads for some damn thing. Hmm. I will, I remember when but, I but, but 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 they're not hired for anything else but to bring bodies in. That's all. They need subscribers and they need people to listen a long time. That's all. That's the only reason. If they didn't have those people, they wouldn't be in business. Well, the subscribership has gone down. I mean, I'm sure it it's has continually it's going continue down. To I mean, erode. Well, you know, well, why do you need a uh, why do you need a satellite? You know, if you in your car, if you're able to get uh, the internet, which most mm -hmm. cars now you're able to, you don't need Sirius XM. You've got the best of all worlds. Well, know? but the, the the difference now is you don't need the Sirius XM satellite. All you need is the app. They were they were very smart in transitioning between the satellite, national coverage, and the technology that well, came you, along. You'd be the right if, if the fact were that that was true. They got into the app and into the Internet awfully late. Yes, they did, but it doesn't matter because they have, they have a huge stable of talent, they have a lot to offer, and they don't need the satellites down the road. But if they have the satellites now and they have the Internet, people would transition. Certainly the younger people, they don't give a damn about the satellite. All they care about is it's on my I got an app for this. I'll put it on my Bluetooth and there it is in my car. For a company, isn't it important for their stock price to be good? I, I would assume most most companies live like Sirius that. Sirius XM yeah. stock has not changed a penny since we left. So what? In fact, it's less than when we were there. All right. I got. I don't. I don't you, know much about the. If about you got rid of your four hundred one k, you got it in time. Or do you still have your Sirius XM? I still have. You still have it. Yeah. That hasn't earned you a penny. Probably. Probably lost it, you. Some it money. won't earn me a penny until I sell it. So I don't care. I still have the stock. Yeah. Well. And maybe one day somebody else, maybe uh, another massive company will come and gobble them up, and the stock. Will I go sold up. mine off, but I had to keep, I think, like a really small little part of it. I couldn't get rid of every inch of it. Why? I don't know. I don't know. I think we maybe just got rid of it completely, you know, and we put it into a uh, 
in into fidelity, you know. It does you no good. Get rid of it. Well, you know, it's sitting there. It it's the le lesser part of all the money that I have. You know, it's like about seventeen thousand dollars or something. You know, but mm -hmm. um, well, here we are. We're talking about money. Maybe a little bit. Wouldn't you rather talk about health? Not a bit. <laughs> A bit. You know, I, um, science. Let's talk about science. Let's talk about, uh, let's talk about science. But so what, what was science? You know, I was looking up in the, in the, in the, in the sky the other day. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of stars. And, um, I realized that, um, all the stars, which aren't all stars, but all the stars that you can see in the sky have a scientific designation, scientific name, either a Greek or Roman name for the earlier ones that were discovered. And then there's some numerical. Or some kind of a numerical alphabetical uh, designation. Every one of them has that now. All right. And if, and if they're not stars, but you're looking at a galaxy, they have a designation. Yes, but probably we, we haven't that. caught all, we haven't, we've only caught a smidgen. No, but but all the ones all the ones that we can see are being cataloged. Have a name, right? yes. Okay, they have they have a scientific designation of some kind, except for our sun and our moon. They do not have a scientific name. They're simply called the sun and the moon. Our planet is Earth. Yeah, that doesn't have a scientific name either. Right. Sun, moon, Earth. No scientific name. Why? You, are we, you, are, are we, are, that is interesting. Yeah. Are we so uh, so in, self involved that we can't give our own sun and moon and planet a scientific designation within why, our? Why don't we call it? Uh, why don't we call Earth uh, Alex? Well, see, that's that's a bit much. I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't mind Earth, but why give give the sun and the moon a name? You know. Well, Luna. That's is just it... Latin Latin for for moon. For moon, okay. Um, yeah, the moon doesn't have a name. No, neither does the sun. Some people say Sol, but that's and yet Latin. other sun. moons on other planets do have names. Yes, every one of the moons in our solar system has a name, and they say it's the moon of blah blah blah. It's called Enceladus. It's the moon of blah blah. blah. Our moon has no name. Hmm. Why don't we? Why don't we? Why don't we do something? A quick little logic but question. A quick planet. little logic question for you before we go. I saw this one the other day, and I got it right. Um, it's uh, it's the uh, the night that we go to daylight savings time. Saving. Saving time. Mm -hmm. It's four o'clock in New York. What time is it in California? If we go to daylight saving. Then we have to um, fall fall back, spring forward. It's four o'clock in New York. Mm -hmm. It's one o'clock in in California. Well, at, wait a minute. Be a bit more specific about the question. Have we just changed to daylight saving time? Yeah, you're, you're, it's the night the daylight saving time takes place. And I live in New York. And I live in New York, and now it's four o'clock. I look at my watch; it's four, four o'clock. What time so is it in California? So that's four So that so that would mean um, that it's really three o'clock, midnight. Correct. Right. But that's interesting. It's the one time of the year where actually we're four hours ahead instead of three hours ahead. Yeah, but this is a whole other discussion. This is about this. I w I can talk to you forever about about the um arbi arbitrariness arbitra uh, uh, of daylight saving nature time? no of time itself mm. time does not exist time is a reference for humans to know what's going on in addition to the three um uh, 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 dimensions of space. Okay. Time, but time really doesn't exist. It's created by humans as a reference point to go along. We need a reference. Yeah. Yeah. 
You know how, how you, you know how you completely lose track of time? Get to be my age without a job. Somehow you wake up and you say, what day is this? What time is it? You know, I got to look at the watch. It doesn't matter. Oh, is it already three o'clock? You know. Here, here anyway. Most places. Time, it, time it really matters matter. because I say to you, hey, let's have lunch. When? Three o'clock. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's simply a reference. Yeah. When hey, listen, space I, exists. We've run out of time. I love talking to you. You know, what else? I really, what I else? know, I really enjoy this. I look forward to it. Well, good. Let's 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 uh, let's have that occasion without talking about uh, health problems. Don't want to do that. Well, unless I've got a real health problem, I won't talk to you about it. Well, if you have a real health problem, you're probably not going to be around. That's a real health problem. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't have any more health. I'm out of health. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's uh, Albert Reynoso. Say goodbye, Albert. Goodbye. Now in its 10th year, this is Gavin. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ah, yes. Good old Albert. I like Albert. Albert's, uh, I think he's my best friend now. I think so, because he's the only one that's still left alive. Hi, everybody. I'm Alex. Oh, boy. Well, how do I feel today? I feel okay, actually. I, uh, I was, uh, and went, went out with Marjorie, went to get our, we, we've had these cell phones for three years, and so now the battery is finally starting to go on each of them. And we decided it was time to get our new phone, so we went down to get our new phone, and then we decided we were going to get a, 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 a what do you call it, a, a, um, a joint account, okay? We found out we saved money doing that. And then we saved money because we were both AARP. And then we saved money on something else. Before we were through, we found out our new phones are going to cost us $10 a piece, <laughs> okay? But anyway, so we went out, and I, uh, I, Marjorie was saying, you're walking pretty good today. And I said, yeah, it seems to be a little easier than it was. So, yeah, I'm feeling okay today. Anyway, I'm saying that we should probably bring in the um, citizen panel. Let's see who they are here. First of all, let me... Let me bring them in here. Let me see. Where are we? Uh, bu 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 I gotta. Where? How do I do? Oh, okay. I I keep forgetting how to do stuff now. Excuse me, folks. I'm an old fart. All right. There's uh there's uh there's uh there's uh, uh let's see here. Uh, Charlie Wallace and oh hey Josh. What do you know? Ah yeah. There you are tonight. So you here tonight? What about tomorrow night? Yeah, don't think I can do tomorrow or Saturday. Uh huh. And Saturday, yeah. Okay. Well, and I then I got an I got another week before I have to go. You know wherever I'm gonna go, I Paris. Yeah. This is a little town outside of New York called Paris. <laughs> and Paris, uh, Texas too. What'd you say? There's a Paris, Texas too. There is a Paris, Texas. You're you're yeah. quite right. I I I I know that because I I used to live in Texas, you know. Yeah. So, whatever. Let me put on my earphones. It's easier for me to hear you guys and off the speaker on the side. So, let me do this. Let me bring the audio down a little bit here, and there we go. Okay. Anyway. Uh, but anyway, so uh, yeah, because I got what two weeks from today we leave for Paris. And then we kept back five days later. Hello to our, our uh, newer minted friend, Richard Braun. Hello, Richard. How are you? Good, good. Yeah? And, so, and uh, Jeff, how are you doing? You Jeff, can't. you don't have your, you don't have your uh, well, audio yeah. on. What, what, I, I, what are you using? Are you using an iPad or are you using a... Control F four. Yeah, yeah. Well. Yeah. Oh, uh, he's yeah. Bingo. He's looking. There you I'm go. There. There you are. 
Let's all give him a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Jesus. I'm sorry, Jeff. Anyway, so where was I? Oh, so, oh, hey, listen, um, <laughs> this always happens. Last night, I, I, I come in around 1 o'clock because I go to see if I need to do anything because um, um, Amy Manuel and the intersection would be going off and I'd have to turn stuff on and so on and so forth and to post programs and so on. And all of a sudden, it's not there. And I suddenly realized that she hadn't done a show last night. But she failed to tell me. She said, See, well, I told like everybody you know, else. We all knew. What? We all knew. Well, that's she, fine. She, that's she fine. early voting, and she can't get up at 5 o'clock in the morning after doing yeah, that Yeah, but why doesn't she, she tell me that? Well, well, she told all of us. Well, you aren't the ones that have to know. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So uh, she's not going to be on for the next two weeks. Want to do a show, Josh? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> and we'll I have a couple nights off next week, and then I'm going to be off for a while after that. I have the whole week of the election off, so maybe. Yeah, in the week of the election, I'm not going to be on. Oh, I'm going to be on. Uh, I'm going to be on. I'm going to do a show on. I think. I think on Tuesday. And I will also probably do a show on Wednesday. Thursday we leave town. So, mm -hmm. you know, we'll whatever. I hope the here when you get back. Hmm? So I hope the country's here when you get back. Well, you know, you know, my theory of what I plan to do is uh, if, uh, if, uh, if Trump wins, I'm not coming back. <laughs> yeah, but if he loses, they might burn down the country. Well, in which case I won't be here to... Be part of the the uh, the uh, conflagration, you know. Um, yeah, because I mean, um, how's it looking? What what? Uh, I saw something today that said she's doing fine. You know, I hear that she's the, that the uh, un, the undecideds are breaking sixty to thirty six for her. So that's a good, uh, and 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 the trend seems to be you know incrementally. Uh -huh. Yeah, because I saw in, something in tonight on, on NBC or something where they said she was losing, according to the Wall Street Journal. But who owns the Wall Street Journal? <laughs> Rupert Murdoch. Okay. Some of the polls that are coming out saying that, and they're all flooding the market now. So I'm not sure how indicative they really are. What polls? Conservative polls. Oh, conservative polls. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you can part. You know, I don't. Uh, you can uh, you can screw these things any way you want to do them. You know, um, uh, it it, um, uh, it I never I never pay attention to any conservative poll. I never pay attention to any right wing poll, left wing poll. I want something that I can rely on, and and usually I, the New York Times has been pretty good that way. Uh, the, the the New York Times. What's the other part of the name of that poll? Uh, seemed to have it better, but you know, I don't know. I don't know. You know, the fact that it's even this close is depressing. It just oh, makes yeah. me have no faith in this country whatsoever. You know, and that uh, that really bothers me. Uh, it, it just bothers me that Americans are so screwed up. That it can be this close, yeah. You know, and, and I'm not saying that because they're right wingers that that's why I'm saying that. I'm saying that because the person that they're putting their belief in is a person so bereft of any kind of morality, of any kind of decency. And now with the latest stuff that's come out, where they, you know, uh, he actually said that uh, Hitler did good things. Yep. I mean, come on. I mean, knowing just that is enough to make you not vote for him. I'm not saying you have to go out and vote for Kamala. Just don't vote for him. You know, you can just not even fill that part of the ballot out and go and take care of the rest of your slate, you know? But, geez, I mean, how you can even, in, in, in your wildest imaginations think you can vote for this guy 
you know, I'm, I'm just, so I'm very disappointed in America for that. And even if, if uh, Kamala wins and I feel great about that and all of that, still means that something like 49% of this company, country thought Donald Trump was a good idea. And so where does that put Americans morally as, as people? Are we decent? No, not even close. So, I mean, I, it bothers me. What's the problem that they're having over there with Jeff? He's got the mute on now. He's, oh, his mute is on? Yeah, you, you've got yeah, yourself so. muted, Jeff. Well, I can't take it. unmuted before. Uh huh? No, we know that. It's just so dark, you can hardly see you. I'm working on that. Hey, oh. Oh, you're working on the picture. Yes, sir. Here, let's see if I can brighten it up from this end. Oh, no, that was the wrong thing. I pressed the wrong switch. Excuse me. Yeah. All right. Give me, give me a few. I'm just going to mute us again. So yeah. I'm okay. That's, uh, by the way, that's Pam. And Pam is Jeff's personal um, uh, um, <laughs> tech support. Tech support. Tech yeah. support, which is sad because yeah. that's the blind leading the blind. But that's okay. No, you we'll do okay. You do okay with it. We, we, we try. Yeah. Anyway, so... Um, do you see anything, uh, Josh, that gives you any indication of who's going to win this thing? I don't think we have any idea of that. <clears throat> I mean, polling's all pretty close, you know. Uh, uh, I don't really know how, if it's close, I don't know. I mean, I don't really know who they get for these polls like I, I i mean i'm sure they break it down but i just have never seen like how it breaks down like demographically age you know gender i mean you know like have you, the question is people? and you ask people this question how many people here have been called by a polling organization anybody uh, not me that's what i'm saying like you know, people don't really answer their phone now. So who are the people that do answer their phone? Or who are the people that will answer these things? Do they have a propensity to be older, conservative, Trump, people, you know, white? You know, I mean, I don't know. I mean, that's what I'm saying. I don't I don't have really. And does some of that explain some of the polling errors the last decade? You know, I mean, I, I don't know. People look at it that do that stuff for a living. So I don't. I don't really have any insight into it, but I mean, by all accounts, no matter what, mm -hmm. you go look at a poll over here that has her up nationally by four or five points, and you can go look at a poll over there that has her down two. I mean, you know, I mean, it's it's just like, it's like, like I've joked with you before about people who, <clears throat> people who quote the founders or whatever. I have founder said this, and it's like, okay, give me 90 seconds and I'll come back with, you know, another guy was in the room at the same time that said the exact opposite. I mean, just because you can quote a founder, I mean, I, I, we can do, I mean, you know, I mean, they were just as diverse as we were in their opinions. So, I mean, the fact that you found one that agreed with you doesn't prove anything. I, here's one that didn't, you know, so it's the same thing. Like this poll says winning, this poll says losing so what's the average of that hi <laughs> yeah richard you had your hand up yeah the, and, you know I, I, the best scenario it's 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 uh it's a slim chance that we the democrats hold the senate and, uh, and it's a better chance that they flip the house with that and kamala things could get done uh yep. if if trump wins he's now indemnified for any action he takes as president by the Supreme Court's decision. So he could say, well, hey, Qatar, you know, you, you want this? Put my name on this, you know, give me millions in the, for, a, for a hotel idea. Mm -hmm. So he's going to, I mean, look at his son-in-law. He's got $20 million from the, a, a year. From the Saudis. Management fee for, 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 for the doing, for investing their sovereign money and he has no experience investing money yeah. as, as an investor, as a real estate, as yeah. another story, it, he could, does a lousy job there. So it's very scary what he could do for his own benefit or against his enemies. That's you, you know? Mm -hmm. So all of us now on the internet saying these things, you know, we don't know. 
We, you know, we really don't know. I mean, it, you, you don't know where they're going to start. I mean, the, I mean I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I will say, you know, that uh, we went to uh, town tonight and picked some food up. And, you know, again, we, my wife and I are talking on the way back that, I mean, even in the area that I live, I have never, ever seen as many signs for the Democratic presidential candidate ever in this area. Because I told you before, I live in the most Trump county in the nation. I mean, he won this county like 92 to 8. And he won my precinct like 98 to 2. You know I mean? So, I mean, but in the development, on the back roads to town, in town, there were even more than there were, you know, than a few days ago. As people, now, I mean, I have no idea what that means. Okay, how many you Trump know? signs are there? Well, there's shit tons more, mm -hmm. but I mean, you know, still, cause they've been up since the last election, really. Yeah. probably. You know, but I've just, I've never seen as many for the Demo Now, Are those all the same people that were voting for Democrats before? And this time around, they're just, uh, you know, so hateful of Trump that they just can't take it anymore. And they put a sign out finally, and they never used to put signs out. I don't, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Just saying it. But, and the other thing that I, I found interesting was that, a decent portion of them have sort of mimicked the Trump people's deal with not just the yard sign that says Harris Walls. They have created gigantic signs, banners, flags. There's 12 signs in the yard, not one. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, I mean, I saw Harris Wall signs at three different houses in town today that were as big as a car. You know, I, I mean, saw a pickup truck with a Harris right. Walls sign on, on I-35 you know, in Austin. I mean, you know, and like right there in town, there's this house that Bernie Moreno, the U.S. Senate candidate, has come to for a fundraiser twice. And the people that live next door obviously are not Moreno people because they, I mean, right next to this house where he's come twice, they made sure they erected a sign uh, and stapled it to a four by eight sheet of plywood for Sherrod Brown and Kamala Harris, Harris Wall. I mean, no, by the way, Don Giller, but Don Giller, who hates the, all this politicking, because I agree with him. I, I'm going to be glad when this is all well, over. I you know, uh, uh, has said it said here. Wait a minute, mm -hmm. let me see if I can find it. What happened? Oh, there it is. Marist, which is one of the best polls, right? Came out tonight with a positive number for Harris. Marist, Marist is a top poller. Uh, so, uh, uh, it, it, that's good news. That's good news. I mean, if, if there's, if there's some like shockwave election night and she wins Ohio or something, I mean, I'm just saying that I won't, that I'll believe it because I've never seen the support. You know, there was always like two or three people in town that had, and, and like, and you could tell why, because they were like teachers, they're in a teacher's union. You know, so they would always have along like, with their Harris sign yeah. on the back of their bumper of their car. They should yeah. have had a sign that said "Key Me." Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. But now, I mean, there's like, there's just lots of them. I mean, I I don't I don't know where it came from. You know, I mean, there's a house in town that, like I said, that's got a a fence, and the whole fence is lined with flags for Harris. Really? I mean, I mean it's just it's crazy. I mean, yeah. I. Now let me good. ask you a question though: Is there any real value? In signage, probably not. Do, probably do you not. think it changes anything in your neighborhood? Oh, I seriously doubt it. Yeah, yeah, but no, I, it, I doubt it, it's interesting that people are doing that because I mean, apparently, may... with the with the kind of numbers that your n neighbors had with oh. the being on the other side, right. uh, people probably pretty meek to come out and let people know they were for, for uh, Kamala. Yeah. So I mean, the I've, fact that they're doing it is amazing. I've always put one out. Uh, I have a Harris Walls yard sign that I got. I haven't put it out. I didn't know if I was going to. I am going to put it out. I just haven't gotten around to it. I keep forgetting. And then where my wife parks, she blocks it. So I'd have to move her car to get to it and all that. But uh, but I was like, yeah, I'm going to put mine out. But, I mean, there are four or five in the development now, and I used to only see the one. You know, there, there's a guy that lives over there, and it's a teacher, and the te you know, and he would always have that stuff out, you know, and then his neighbor would always have one out because that is two teachers, lesbians who are married, 
And they always had a sign out, you know. I mean, but that was the only people in the entire development other than me that would have. And I always had one out for Sherrod Brown or, you know, I had one out for Biden. I had one out for Obama both times, you know, that we lived here. So I'll put it. But there's just a lot more than I've ever seen, especially when you go to the next town over, which is really, you know, it's the county seat. It's a little bigger. But I've never seen as many. I mean, Trump still wins. That why? Area. Why the Wait. really big signs, though? That's the other part I don't get. Yeah, that's get. what I'm saying. I, I don't mean, know. you know, you you save those for rallies, you know, and things yeah. like that. But but that that's what I'm saying is I don't, you know, I don't know because well, my Trump sign is bigger than your Trump sign. <laughs> well, but the Harris signs that are out, I mean, you know, there's a couple houses in town that, I mean, they literally have like 20 yard signs in their yard. You know, I mean, it's funny. I wonder who's producing right? those because I don't think those are being produced by, you know, uh, Harris Walls people. I, I have a funny feeling that they're being made professionally and sold at a good, decent price. A lot of the ones that I saw were homemade and you could tell. Oh, really? I've seen a lot of the official campaign ones because I got mine from the campaign mm -hmm. and it came in an envelope from a printer in Texas with a little note that said it came from a union. I was going to say Mark's sex books. <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I saw, I mean, that, but, and then the local Democratic Party had a bunch made and they sold them and they look a little different than the official campaign ones, but they were allowed. They had an agreement to have some printed locally and sell them to make money for the local Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of them came from there. Um, you can tell, you know, and then I think the Sherrod Brown campaign was was helping get them out there. According um, to Tony here, he says on the chat, which I hardly ever look at, he says on the chat that uh, Trump is doing uh, Joe Rogan tomorrow. Oh, well, that's awesome. Yeah. That's why I vote for it now. Yeah, I wonder why. Yeah, yes, what were you going to say, Mr. Braun? Hmm. Huh? No, just popping the... Uh, oh, I see. Oh, okay. Yeah, but what, Jeff? I have a question. I understand that she had a big presentation on TV yesterday. I never got to hear it. Did you guys hear it? Which presentation? She had a town hall on CNN last night. Yeah. I thought she was on TV. Yeah, she was. No, yeah, well, that's CNN. CNN. How they was town hall? Yeah. I, I guess Trump was invited and didn't come. So they just did uh -huh. one with Harris. Okay. Right. He he had opted out. I'm not doing a second one. I'm not. I'm not. No. She's the loser, and I'm not giving her a second chance. <laughs> so he went, he went to Georgia for. <clears throat> No, but no, but this was the town hall. I don't right. think they would have put them on the same town hall together. I no. think that what he turned he down was a town hall with CNN. He, you know, I thought they, they turned it into a town hall. Yeah, I thought they were going to have. Oh, both oh was that was when that was when the debates was supposed to be. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. But so, I, I don't know where it was. Was it in Georgia? Um, I think it was. It, it may have been. My understanding was the audience was made up of declared undecided voters. Uh, and that is who they allowed to ask the questions. And then after the debate, or the, the debate, the thing last night, CNN recorded a thing with them that they played this morning where they asked the undecided people that were allowed to ask questions who they would vote for if they had made up their mind last night and if she had persuaded any of them. And a lot of the people said that they would vote for Harris. Okay. Which in Georgia is a huge deal. And a couple of them that said they were voting for Harris said they voted for Trump last time. Oh, really? In 2020. I'm, you know, it, Why, I don't know. There's but. every indication that leads us not to worry. But it, this is just, the whole thing's been very scary. And I think primarily because uh, uh, all these uh, networks are ginning it up, yeah. you know? Oh, she's she hasn't you know it's very tight. It's neck and neck. We don't know who's going to win. It, it's it's all that's what's good for MSNBC. That's what's yeah. good for CNN. Yeah. You know, is to create this angst. And I know people that are genuinely, you know, on edge because of this thing. You know, but early voting is way up. I mean, in Texas, we're setting records for early voting. How does that, what does, what does that indicate though? 
that indicates that the more Democrats are coming out to vote. Well, I'm sure they're coming out to, out? out to vote, but do you have more Democrats in Texas than you do Republicans? Yeah, it's just they don't vote. We barely oh. get 50% in our largest voter turnout, turnout in Texas. Wow. So if we get 60%, that extra 10% is going to be all Democrats. Yes, there are more. We're, I think we're getting pretty close to Hispanics being the majority in Texas. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, um, I'll tell you what Texas did do in the last couple of days. They were supposed to execute a guy yeah. for shaken baby syndrome. Yep. And uh, everybody, I mean, almost everybody, politicians, everybody said, this is wrong. You shouldn't yeah. execute him for that. And he is question as to whether he even shook the baby. You know, and this was, high, what, 20 years ago. But in Texas, if you're sentenced to death, your chances of getting out of that is very difficult. Very we difficult. We usually kill more people by capital punishment than all the other states put together. Yeah. Well, part of the problem was with, with Texas and the death penalty, because I lived there and I knew what was go I paid attention to what was going on that way, is that they gave the governor... Almost no ability at commuting a sentence. It has to be commuted by the parole board who takes it up, and then they never, ever turn it around. Never, you know. And the reason the governor can't is because there was a, there was years ago, there was a, um, a governor in Texas. Um, had a, it was a female with a male name. Or maybe it had a few. She had a few male names. I'm trying to remember now what the name was, but she was so corrupt that she would let people murder people, and then if they were friends of hers, she'd, you know, she'd commute their sentence. And people were really mad about that. And uh, they made a law that the governor can do very little to commute a sentence like that, a death sentence. So it's very difficult. So the fact that this has been at least stopped, put on hold. So they can look at it again and give it a second look. And then today, it looks like tomorrow, the Menendez brothers will be free. So a uh, little, little judicial stuff I thought I'd throw in there at the last minute here. The ability to um, uh, commute a sentence is, uh, goes back to kings, which who could do it, right? Mm -hmm. And I could see that. You know, but it, 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 the power to be abused is amazing. I think uh, Clinton kind of Trump. upset me with his his leave and and the and the pardons he did at the end. And you can, you know, do things for for friends uh, that might benefit you later. But if the if the president only had the power to say send it back to court for for uh, for a look, get it. Put it away from him mm -hmm. so you could say okay let the top guy the governor or the president commute a sentence or not commute but mm -hmm. refer it to the judicial process and let them take care of it so it's not political let me look up here i want to look up uh i, guess yeah, I, I think I, it was I, a can... judge that stopped the execution here in texas judge i think it was a judge that just stayed it or this one yeah Yes. But uh, right. it, it, he put it, he put it up for review. What it was is they wanted him to appear before a committee or a, a council or whatever on Monday, but he couldn't if they executed him on Friday. Yeah. So so that's why uh, it was uh, it was turned around. Let me see here. Um, you know how long he had to sit on hold to explain that, you know? Yeah. Well, I, I, I can't be there Monday. I'm I'll be dead. <laughs> if something's an injustice. Then send it back to the Justice Department, you know, the, the judicial area, and let them see if they need hmm. to change their 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 ways or, or or request a change in the law so it's clear or whatever. Really trying to find that. I'm putting in corrupt Texas governor. Let's see what the name is. Greg oh. Abbott <laughs> comes <Yeah>. up. <laughs> you don't have to go very far for that. Oh, Ma corrupt Ferguson. Regime. Ma Ferguson. Ma Ferguson, yeah. Yeah, Ma Ferguson. Uh, uh, was the that was a long time ago? Was a, was, yeah, I know, I know, but it goes back that far yeah. that the governor of Texas 
has been given very li little uh, leeway in commuting a sentence of this sort. So, you know. Um, as somebody wrote here, Trump loses, he will take it to the court, to court, and then the House of Representatives. No, he can't take it to the House of Representatives, can he, Josh? Well, I mean, there are some ways with like they tried to do last time with how they count the votes and or you know how they pledge their electoral votes and all that. I mean, it, mm -hmm. you know, if no one gets to two seventy, it throws itself to the yeah. to the House constitutionally. But I don't imagine that. I mean, I think somebody will get to two seventy. I don't. I don't. There's just enough states that are guaranteed to either side. Mm -hmm. you know, that I, I mean, the, I mean, I think that someone will get to 270 i don't imagine that they won't yeah yeah um, could, here if, comes if, tony if he if 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 the republicans tie up some state let's say tennessee and they can't they they can't uh, even certify anything because it's in the court then those electoral votes wouldn't count they wouldn't they wouldn't yeah, be they don't there. pledge them at the college I and it wouldn't be 270 270 wouldn't be the breaking point. It would be the majority of whoever um, put in their vote. But uh, that's, yeah, but that, that that's, that's only it, that would have to be states that one of them won that was they were not expected to. You know, like Tennessee will go to Trump, they will pledge their votes. You know, so yeah. just, you know, uh, Massachusetts will go to Harris, they will pledge their votes. California will go to her. They they What's they're like Pennsylvania. They yeah, it would have to be somewhere that Republicans control a lot of at the state level, but she would win. So a place like Georgia, for example, basically. Mm -hmm. um, I can't imagine what happened in Pennsylvania because they have a lot of Democratic lawmakers, as far as I understand, in their state government that I know of. Mm -hmm. I think their legislature is Republican, but it's some of their, but like their governor is a Democrat. They have a lot of their cabinet level stuff's a Democrat. So it had to be like, you know, there's probably very few instances where I think that could come to play. I mean, George is one of the ones that I think of, but they've tried to do a lot of crap and it's been overturned in the, in their courts there in the last couple of weeks. So, yeah. you know, I mean, no one can say for certain something will or will happen. I mean, you know, I know as much as nobody. <laughs> I really don't. Good answer. You know, I mean, I'm serious. I mean, you know, I mean, I don't know. I guess we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean. Well, I think there are a couple of states where we could possibly see a strange turnaround. I think one that could surprise us is Texas. Um, main, and you would agree with me on that, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, because um, you're in Texas, obviously. That's why I say all those record ter voters. Well, I'm, what I'm saying is, you've <clears throat> got see here. There are there are two things. Uh, do you have abortion on the on the? Um, no, it's not. Okay. What what you do is if you've got some other thing besides, say, the presidential that people turn out for, and in this case, very heated race between Ted Cruz and who's the uh, other person? Colin Allred. Colin Allred. And he, how is Colin Allred holding up in the, in the uh, polls? Hey, it's still neck and neck, but it's starting to look like he's going to unseat Cruz. Well, if that happens, then I think there's a good chance that uh, that Harris may win in Texas. You know, because people who uh, only logical people that would want to unseat Cruz would also be the people that would have vote for would vote for Harris. So I think they're kind of linked to each other. But there's still people here mad at Cruz for going to Cancun during that <laughs> ice storm. That I'm still died. mad at him for that, and I don't even live there. Yeah. Well, I think, the, you know, it gets to a point where some of these people are so vociferous that after a while, their voting populace gets tired of them. Mm. You know, they just want to get rid of them to shut them up. They don't want them to do another stupid thing, right? And, I mean, how, how bad can you be as a politician that a guy comes along and accuses your father of killing Robert Kennedy? <laughs> That's funny. It's and, crazy. Yeah, and six and and not and uh, what? Uh, eight years later, you're kissing his ass. What? What right. is that? Right. You know, does that make any kind of sense? 
No. I mean, he's got, I mean, that just shows you they have no spine, really, at all. Yeah. Well, we know that about Ted Cruz. Yeah. You know, I mean, there are there are politicians who just play the field. You know, they play the game. And there are other people who are politicians who are there because they want to do good stuff. You know, and in the case of Ted Cruz, all he wants to do is get reelected over and over and over again. Y- yes. Do you think he doesn't want to be Secretary of State or Defense I don't. I don't so, know. Isn't it better being a, a senator? I don't know. He's not. He's not well liked in the chamber, and if he doesn't have oh. a majority, they say he's the most hated he's, person he's in ass. the Senate. He's the most singularly hate, disliked person in the Senate. Yeah. Um, I think I heard Franken, Al Franken, in a yeah. uh, interview he was doing. They said, "Who's the most disliked uh, senator in, in 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 Senate?" And he said, "Ted Cruz, no question." Mm-hmm. Ted. You know, but then again, he listed uh, what's his name, um, Graham, Lindsey Graham, Lindsey Graham, as being the funniest person in the Senate. <laughs> and I saw an interview with Lindsey Graham that uh, I think it was Al Franken did with him, and he was hilarious. Mm. He was hilarious. So the, at least he has a sense of humor. You, you can't fault him for that. You know? A lot of gay men are, are funny. <laughs> <laughs> Just being gay is funny, you know. Saying, you know, I mean, he probably has a great. <laughs> then I know what gay people are saying, time. Alex. You're being uh, you're being homophobic. No, I'm not. There is something inherently funny about queens, okay? And and I think most other gays would agree with me on that, you know. And I, uh, you know, I mean, I, hey, I grew up gay, so. Yeah, I mean, we'll see here in Ohio. I mean, you know, they have, they have Sherrod Brown on the ballot who's winning against Moreno. And, you know, there's a ballot initiative in Ohio again this time, a major one. Uh, the biggest one in years after a decade of arguing back and forth since the last redistricting. There's finally a ballot initiative in this state to take it away from the legislature and give it to a group of citizens uh, appointed by a bipartisan panel or something like that, Mm -hmm. that I think is going to pass. So if people turn out big for those two things, they're probably going to, I mean, if you're for Sherrod Brown and you're for that issue, issue one, probably going to vote for Harris. Yeah. I think. You know, but not necessarily. So how many of those? I mean, I think we might be surprised. We might be surprised the states that that uh, that Harris takes. I mean, if she won Ohio on election night, the the election is over. You can I mean, I mean, the question is what celebrating. I've I've often heard this term used. It depends on what kind of ground game they've got. Yeah, because, you know, the number of electoral votes in this populous state have been calculated in for him in every projection period. Yeah. And if you take those away and give them to Harris, it, I mean, it, 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 it doesn't matter. I mean, it, it'll be over. I mean, he could win Pennsylvania and it wouldn't do anything but be a wash. I mean, it, it would just, I mean, she wins Ohio. If she, if she wins Ohio, she'll win Pennsylvania. Did Obama win Ohio when he ran? Uh, both times, I believe. Yeah. yeah. And then Trump. Yeah, so what did what did Obama I mean, what did Obama do? Well, that's always you know I what did he do to to get the people in Ohio on his side, where then when Hillary ran, she couldn't get them on her side. Well, one thing that he did was he was a man. Yeah, <laughs> made a difference. You know, and I mean, I hate to say that, but uh, I think that had a lot to do with it. I think it still has a lot to do with it. You know, I mean, how does this state end up with Democratic senators a lot? You know, up until up until just recently, they had two Democratic senators at all times for decades. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the state has had a Democratic governor in in the last few decades several times, you know. Um, So, I mean, there was it's not it's not a 
as we could call it, a stalwart um, um, a Republican area. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's considered that now because of where it's moved in the last five, six years. Mm -hmm. It's considered the new Texas, basically, mm -hmm. you know, but I don't, but, but like I said, but I, I see some evidence on the ground that people aren't ready to accept that. So maybe, you know, that'll be the case. I, I, I see really... that she might be able to take Arizona. Maybe. Yep. Good You're chance right. of that. New Mexico, which the last time I think went for Trump. Uh, I thought she no, it went. No, it went for. Uh, uh, no, but I mean, when he ran for well, the first time. In 2016. I think yeah. they went, the New Mexico okay. went for Trump. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, they say he she's going to take New Mexico. Uh, Nevada is another one that's up for grabs. And I think I think they've got a good ground game going, and I I I think that Trump has taken this this election too much for granted in the beginning, and then when she came along, he froze, he literally froze, and started doing things which made no sense at all. Yes, Mr. Braun. Oh, one thing is North Carolina has an interesting situation since the the Republican governor has all this bad history of porn and whatever. Uh, so they're disincentivized to vote, to go out. The Republicans are disincentivized to go out and maybe they won't go out for Trump. Look at Trump and look at him. So yeah. Kamala could slip in there. It's also, you know, Kamala does have another thing going that there's a, a passion on the part of her people to get out the vote. You know, not the same kind of passion that Trump has, you know? I don't think and, the Trump people have that kind of passion. If it rains, they won't go out, you know? I don't okay. know. Okay. I think they're pretty solid, but... Alan? Trump's stunt at McDonald's, which was obviously a MAGA thing, yeah. uh, has had repercussions. Throughout California, students from colleges are boycotting McDonald's, is walking around saying... McDonald's, you know, is... The only uh, thing is that you can't blame those McDonald's because these were privately franchised yeah, McDonald's. I, 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 I First of all, that, secondly, you know, they got paid kids, for the use of the place for the day. Right, these kids are voting age, probably never voted in a presidential election before, mm -hmm. and they are out there running around with picket signs saying, don't eat at McDonald's. You know, they support Trump, and this is in California. Well, there's another reason not to eat at McDonald's. The onions. The uh, e. coli. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'd be interested to see the, the contract from headquarters, whether, it's, whether they say you can use your property for a um, political purpose. Yeah, well, they, they, they've, they, been saying, they just, they've been they saying made it. trouble for the corporate this time. Right. Be yeah. Well, I'm sure that franchise is hearing from McDonald's. I'm sure. I'm sure they did. I mean, I'm sure they weren't happy with that. Nope. Um, I also know I'm never buying a Tesla. So there's another person that's yeah. been hurt a lot. Now, I've, I've already <clears throat> bought my Tesla, so I'm uh, and I'm pretty happy with it. Now, I'm sure you're happy you with it, but license. but if you were to buy it, it today, if, if you were uh, going to buy a car today, would you buy a Tesla? I know. I, I, I'm, I'm making Trump, um, uh, Elon more wealthy, but uh, it's a good car. Yeah, I know it's, it's a good car. I'm That's not what I'm arguing. But you know something? There are a lot of other people making good cars that are electric. Okay. Like mm who? -hmm. Huh? Uh, there's a there's one car. I can't remember which one it is. It's one, it's an SUV or something like that. Gets 450 miles to the to the charge. You know, and uh, 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 yeah, so there are other people making electric hours, cars. And now. then I have to, I, I take a 20 minute break to, to gas uh, to electric up. It's it's not bad for driving four hours to take a 20 minute break. It takes you tw only 20 minutes to charge it up. I have to go from 100 down to 20. If I leave home with 100 and I, and, you know, traveling to New York from Virginia. Maybe I'm, you know, by by New Jersey, I'm I'm, I'm at twenty, Maryland, I'm at twenty, so it says go gas up. 
or go I'm, charge I'm, up and then i'm finished yeah so it, it it's not really a bother uh, how that, fast does how really fast you can't get 100 percent charge in a half hour. You don't do it because it stresses the battery. They want you to go to 80 uh, or <clears> 30 uh, on a regular basis. But if you're taking a long trip, they say, yeah, go to 100. Mm -hmm. 100%. It's, it takes the last, uh, the last bits take longer than yeah. the, it's faster to charge from 20 to 80. So it, it's I like see. down to trickle it. charge? Yeah. yeah. And you say you don't want to waste time. You know, I could spend another thirty minutes and go. So the oh, so the last the the, the last uh, uh, twenty is a trickle charge. Yeah. Yeah. So you can live without that. And you can, yeah, all the time. Now, when you come to New York, okay, and you've got an electric car, where uh, do you you don't live in New York, do you? No, I'm visiting um, family, and uh, when I'm on Staten Island, there's only one. So that's wow. that's too few, and they're they're trying to open one a set at Stop and Shop, but it's been just sitting there, all the all unused for like a year. So, but over in Jersey, there's lots of you know. Yeah, yeah, but what about like if you stay? Let's say you stop and you stay at a hotel. Do most hotels have an electric charger? Some of them do. They call destination chargers, mm -hmm. but. Uh, but they're within reason they'll they'll be another uh, and they'll find it for you. Then what happens if you go somewhere and they're like three chargers, okay? And everybody everybody's using one and there's a lineup for the charger. Uh, well, there's actually they incentivize people not to uh, you know linger beyond with the thing attached. They they'll they'll charge them for uh, linger. Yeah. But I mean, still, it's a very, um, it's kind of a difficult there's, thing there's to deal with. Six, eight, a dozen, because yeah. that's like. Mm, there know, are uh, chargers the all over the Bay Area. Well, that's fine. But I'm saying they, that you can still have a bunch you, of people backed up at the chargers. They mm -hmm. actually tell you there's eight out of nine being used and one guy on the way. Or well, maybe that's you. Wow, oh, really? <laughs> and so you know that, yeah, but they're going to roll off in 20 minutes. So by the time you get there. Well, where where I live, I live very close to the Fremont Tesla plant, so we see them all over the San Francisco Bay Area. Teslas all over the place. So yeah, but you see Teslas all over the place. That's even more Teslas to charge up. So yeah, you know, it, one, the acceleration's incredible. They're quiet. Yeah. They're no, a well built car. No, they may be a well built car. I'm not. Look, I'm I'm the first one to tell you that if it weren't for Elon Musk and I were buying a car right now. The car I would buy would be a Tesla, but I couldn't bring myself to buy a Tesla in this environment with what he's done. I don't care what his politics are. It's just what he's doing. OK, and I can't support that. I don't I can't put a penny in his pocket. Well, you know, he, no, but you already sense. have and you did it before any of, all of this, you know, well, I, you know, I know he's a schmuck. So I got out of uh, uh, Twitter almost as soon as he uh, uh, he, he took that o over because that, that, right. was, that was madness what he did to them as a, as a corporation think, the way he treated those employees absolutely Sorry, that, man. that's here in San Francisco I, I think the reason he's backing Trump is Trump said if I'm president all these federal agencies that are going after Twitter and after Tesla and SpaceX I will stop all that from happening. Well, who's going right after now. SpaceX? I, I don't know. He's just got, you know, there, there are federal. Here's how I feel. I absolutely love that. SpaceX. I love everything they do. And I realize that Elon Musk is not a genius. He simply is the money behind it. The geniuses are the ones who are building those goddamn rockets. Okay. Mm -hmm. I and, and I really am a supporter of, of SpaceX. I just wish he would sell the business and get out of it and just let other people run it and own it, you know, because uh, I, I think they on their own and they're, it's pretty much they've done it on their own. Do you think he's there every day? He's too busy rallying with Trump and talking. He, he's too now. busy at Twitter, you know, trying to <laughs> ruin that Putin, company. Alex, he said. Huh? Yeah, he's talking he really, to Putin. He really messed up Twitter. Who's talking to Putin? Uh, Musk said it. He's on a, he talks to him weekly. Wow. 
He talked? Well, be good. No, are you sure you're not thinking about Trump? No, it's Musk. It's breaking. If you Google it, New York Times, it broke the story. He's already said it. He has uh, he has conversations with him all the time. This is all making a lot of sense. This is, this is a guy who is ultimately uh, this is a guy who's ultimately very dangerous, and he's very dangerous yeah. oh, for the yeah. fo- for the following reasons. He has created a series of satellites called Skylink, which just yep. pretty much is up there, just circling the Earth, and it's the biggest. Uh, 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 what can we call it? Uh, satellite communication system that's up there. He has that, and he also has uh, also has um, uh, SpaceX. Uh, and between all of those, he controls a lot of technical power in this country. You know, and okay, so he's following Trump. Do you think the United States is going to stop giving SpaceX money? They need SpaceX now. No, NASA doesn't exist anymore, really. No, they, they NASA does, does exist. Uh, they simply are using SpaceX's rockets. Right. Yeah. To do their work. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. But what wouldn't you? I mean, what's the best company to get? get with? These are the guys who are going to bring back the people that Boeing couldn't. You know? Yeah, Boeing's got some serious problems. Yeah, they're there. I'm nope. sure I'd want to get on one of their planes right now. Well, I don't know what plane I'm going on, but, you know. A Boeing 737 MAX, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll see you all. Nice knowing you. You know. Nice knowing you. Yeah. Hey, don't stand up front. Hmm? Don't, don't be up front. Be in the back. Be in the back? Uh, Why? So you're the last the one to crash? That breaks. Yeah. Well, you know, by being in the front, you get to wherever you're going first before the people That's true. Come back. But you may. I, I often wondered, and uh, 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 nobody here is scientific why? tonight. Is very well. You are. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, what did you want to know, <laughs> Charlie? You are. Uh, I often wondered. Let's say you're in an elevator, <laughs> and let's say somehow the cable breaks. Although I know that they they have safety procedures on them. But let's just say the cable breaks and the elevator starts plummeting to the ground. Just before you hit the ground, if you jump up, will that save your life? No. <laughs> Why? Because... I mean, I sound stupid jump. here and I want to sound stupid because I think it's an interesting question. You cannot jump high enough to defeat the, the law of gravity after you've dropped like 60 or 70 floors. Oh, okay. All right. You just That's right. If you, were, if, in your legs. if you were able to jump right when the elevator hit, you are your body has still got the same inertia. Inertia. Inertia, yeah. inertia thank you, as that elevator. And you're going to hit the yeah. floor of the elevator and break all your yeah. bones. Well, damn it. I was going to you know, save my life if I ever had that problem. But they yeah. don't do that, by the way. They that's what what's his name invented with the elevator. Jeff ordered a safety warrant. Yes, uh, I have a friend who fell at I think he said the third floor when the it went down, the cable broke, whatever it was. He went all the way to the bottom, which three floors, whatever that was. He really got hurt. And he couldn't walk for I'm surprised time. because elevators ever since, uh, who was it? Who's the big elevator maker? Otis. Uh, huh? Otis. Otis. Yeah, Otis. Otis invented the elevator, which couldn't do that. They have the automatic, in, well, inertia brakes. If you fall too fast, the brakes lock. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's well, right. Apparently, if people uh, at a big company have people come and check them, once a year, and yeah. maybe... So they certify them, yes. Certify them. Maybe they change some lubrication that's important or take any lubrication out and and keep the friction working the right way. I don't know right. what... The well, I don't know. I've looked is. at my thing in my building, and the last time they looked at it was a year ago. So I'm... And it's making noise. It's like scraping and squeaking and... Doing all kinds of things, you know. You got to get some more 
people to lubricate it. Yeah. yeah. You know what WD I did? I, what I did, WD40. it was making a squeaking noise, a grinding noise when we got up to my floor. So I went and got some WD-40 and, and yeah. did it, but it didn't seem to help, you know. No, that's too bad. Is yours a hydraulic? I know you're only, your building has, what, eight, tw- to eight, ten, eight ten stores, floors? Yeah. Floors, I'm sure it's probably. There, there's a certain limit how far they do hydraulic and then... You know, because like skyscrapers aren't going to do hydraulics; they're going to be electrically controlled. Well, that what happened was is, I, and I was told by somebody who knows this sort of thing, that here in Manhattan, the all the elevators were run by hydraulics, and so they could only build, like my building is only eight floors, because it, they can only build a elevator that goes as high as the highest point. On the island or whatever, on the area where you live. And that was eight stories. Mm. Because the water had to flow down and do things like that. Absolutely. Then then they built electric elevators. Yep. And when they did that, there's a building just like this one. It looks just like this one, only it's four floors higher. And it has air elevators. And they're fine. Ours, I think, now may be electric. I think. Yeah, they went from hydraulic to electric motors that had spools on it and they had cables and stuff. But nowadays, they just build the motors into the into the outside of the elevator and they go up these tracks and stuff. And so there are a lot, especially skyscrapers. You get in one and, you, you know, you push the oh, top. Oh, you get into a skyscraper. You feel it move. Yeah, those things are just boom. And they're quick. Yeah, they're very quick. Unless you get some kid who comes along and then pushes every button. Every <laughs> Oh, boy. So, anyway, so uh, we got about, uh, got about what, uh, two minutes left here. Anybody want to say anything? I would get different uh, rubber bands on your, on your shoes, just in case. <laughs> different rubber you bands on my I, shoes? I don't know. So, yeah, on your shoes. So, so, so if you have to bounce. Yeah. Why, yeah. Not, why not buy some Nikes with shock absorbers built in? There you go. Yeah, that's good, too. I just bought myself some new shoes. I'm in my new shoes all the time. I'm looking for a pair of shoes that works good with uh, with the neuropathy. And I think I found some that says they're good with neuropathy, so we'll have to see they're coming any day now. Get the insoles, especially with the walking you're going to do. Yeah, but they, they well, they, this thing has everything all built in with the heels. Okay. It, it surrounds the heels and, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm just going to hope that they're okay. Otherwise, I'll just hobble around Paris, you know. I hope I get to talk to you, Alex, uh, offline about uh, France because, you know, I was in Paris for a few years. So. Oh, really? You live there? I was working and living there. Wow. That, that must have been nice. Oh, yeah. were, you were in Paris itself. Yes. You know, I got to tell you, I've I've been to some beautiful cities in my life. That's just the most beautiful city in the world. My wife wants to go back. San Francisco yeah. may have been the other one. I hear now not so much, yeah. but you know, San Francisco was. They're, they're cleaning it up. It's was, just real slow. Yeah, San Francisco was gorgeous, and uh, what was the other one? Uh, uh, I, Beijing was incredible. Just incredible. Oh yeah, you so. spit your you spit on the on the ground at Beijing. It's a hundred dollar fine. No, that's in uh, yeah. in uh, that, that's in uh, where, where is it? Uh, you can do China. Come on. That's not China. Be that's nice not. to yourself, Alex. Huh? Be nice to yourself. Take take another week for China. In China was a great yeah, really. I, my favorite trip of all time. I, I, we went back to France um, for the summer. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we spent three weeks there. So that sounds nice. Wow. Yeah. Well, anyway, right. you hear that? There's the music. Yep. Oh boy, it's not been nice tonight. Everybody's been happy and whatever. So you're not here tomorrow night, right, Josh? No. You're not here. Okay. And uh, everybody, stay okay. tuned for Amy Manuel, who's next. <laughs> no, she's not. <laughs> well, you didn't tell me last night. You said, you said it, and then 
discontinued. I could yeah. before I could get any words out. It was the last thing you said before you shut it down. Yeah. Yeah. Well. You know. Th thanks everybody for. Next week, thanks everybody for warning me ahead of time. Okay. We just thought you knew. Yeah. yeah I'm sure. You. Yeah. She never lets me know. She never. She lets you guys know. Like, well, they'll probably tell Alex. Well, they oh, don't count on that. You know. Tell us that we need and, to tell Alex. Anyway, hey, listen. Thanks, everybody. Thanks to uh, Jeff for being here tonight, mm -hmm. and uh, also uh, Richard. Please call more often. You're great. You're terrific. You're down there in Virginia, right? Uh, I live in Virginia, but I'm up here in New Jersey. Okay. Well, figure out where you're going to live and let us know, okay? Uh, Charlie, thank you for being here. Josh, always a pleasure. Alan, always a pleasure with you. And Tony, good to see you as well. If everybody would give a big wave goodbye, I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizens panel. Uh, there is absolutely no uh, uh, intersection tonight or for the rest of this week, or all of next week, uh, because she's, I don't know, she's at the polls or something. Anyway, I, uh, I will see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? <laughs> Good night, everybody.